Hello, and welcome to those who've joined us a little bit early today. Today's Huawei Tech Talk Live broadcast is about Pushkit. We will have a lecture from our expert, Clement Fong, and you'll have a chance to ask some questions in the forum, which you can find through the QR code that will appear in a moment. We will also have a questionnaire that we hope you can fill out, and the link to that is under the video on the YouTube page. We now have about 10 minutes until we start. Thank you. Starting a new day with a fresh cup of coffee. Staying connected with the world anytime, anywhere. Seeing something beautiful is just a finger tap away. Capturing those wonderful moments. Enjoying a smart home. Uncovering surprises everywhere. A better connected, intelligent life in all scenarios comes from openness and innovation. And it is defined by global developers together. Open chipset device cloud capabilities and services accelerates development. Diverse development and testing tools help developers innovate throughout the entire development process. All scenario distribution and promotion make your content readily accessible to 500 million users. Flexible cooperation models support profitable partnerships. Global support guarantees access to full lifecycle services. Huawei Developer connects global developers together for building an open, innovative, and mutually beneficial ecosystem.
Whether you want to increase your app's exposure and engagement or attract new users, push messaging is essential for quickly improving user perception and acquiring more active users. However, the messages you send may get lost or be invalid, and even the messages that do get through won't do you any good if they're bland unattractive or they're not accurately targeted. If you're worried about these kinds of problems, Huawei PushKit can help you solve them. PushKit serves as a platform for app developers to send messages in real time, from the cloud to a user's device. It has large channel capacity with maximum throughput of 10 million messages per second. With a reach rate of 99%, PushKit makes rapid, smooth push messaging a reality. It supports push messaging based on topics, tags, and customized push messaging, so that your messages target the right users. It also supports a variety of forms of messages, such as short text, long text, and big picture, to help you grab users' attention. Real-time message delivery notifications allow you to check on the delivery status of each message. Be aware of the message loss rate and users who have not yet received your messages, so you can customize your marketing strategies accordingly. PushKit can automatically present messages in the Hello everyone, 
Welcome to the live broadcast of Huawei Tech Talk. I'm your host, Sam. You know, when we pick up a phone, the first thing we usually see is a push message, which may be important news, important event reminders, or social events. In any case, we can find that push messages are an important means for obtaining information. Also, how engaging an application is depends largely on how messages are pushed. Today, I'd like to share with you how Huawei Push provides you with a free, stable, accurate, customized push services. During the live broadcast, please feel free to ask any questions you may have in the forum, which you can access by scanning the QR code at the bottom of the screen. Some of those questions will be answered directly and some remaining questions answered at the end by our lecturer. So now it's time to introduce today's lecturer, Clement Fung. He is Huawei's developer technical support engineer, mobile developer and artisan of software. Let's see what exciting content he has to share with us. Hi guys, my name is Clement Fung. I am a senior engineer from Huawei. For most of my career, I have been working on mobile development. And before coming to Huawei, I was a lead application engineer at one of the major online news media in Hong Kong. There, I manage a team of engineers and were responsible for architectural design. Other than that, I also have experience in developing transportation apps and travel-related apps. My philosophy is, in this line of work, whatever can go wrong will definitely go wrong. All the small problems and hiccups you try to run away from today will inevitably catch up with you sooner or later. So, attention to detail is of utmost importance. Today, I'm going to talk about the HMS PushKit. First, I'm going to introduce Huawei's PushKit We'll go through the value of it, why it is important, some features, and successful stories. Then, we'll talk about some more technical details, for example, the implementation logic of the PushKit SDK in an app, walkthrough of the App Gallery Connect console, some common APIs on both device and surface side. Afterwards, we'll go deeper into actual configuration and coding, work on a demo application, and also trying to run through a push sending process. Sounds good? Let's go. Push notification is one of, if not the most, important component in the mobile environment nowadays. The most significant impact mobile technology has brought upon humanity in the last two decades is the ability to connect. People are more information packed and communicating more tightly and frequently than ever in human history. And it is safe to say a big part of the mobile ecosystem is driven by push notification. Messaging apps, news apps, weather apps, transportation apps, social media, mobile games. Push notification is an integral part of all of these. In the business and development perspectives, push notification is important as it is the most straightforward and efficient channel for the developer to communicate with and provide information to the users. Because it is present regardless if the app is in background or foreground. It can be used to give users news and updates, notify them of new features, remind them of ongoing services, and therefore consistently drive traffic to the applications. Through these features, we can extend the life cycle of a user. With push notifications ability of constant interaction, it can strengthen the presence of the application, hence improve users' daily activeness, improve users' retention, and wake up silent users. Also, by consistently updating users with news 
and reminding them about the application services, we can improve product utilization. Driven by push notification, we can improve activity participation rate, promote newly added functions, and facilitate business transformation. For developer, I think there is no higher achievement than making your app a habit or routine for your users. And this goal is a lot more achievable with the help of push notification. With its importance in mind, PushKit is one of the earliest developed and heaviest invested components in the Huawei mobile service. It is nonetheless one of the most integrated and used kits by developers all over the world within the entirety of HMS core. In HMS, we provide a very powerful and versatile push kit. It is stable and reliable with a 99% success rate of delivery and the capability to send real-time message receipts. It provides precise target pushing, where aside from mass pushing, notifications can also be pushed to specific devices, specific audiences, and also to specific subscribers to a certain topic. It is also highly customizable in different aspects, localization, action buttons, custom styles, you name it. Furthermore, PushKit is also cross-platform. Other than on Android, it also works on both iOS and web. So, you may want to ask, how? That sounds fantastic, but would it be just marketing gimmicks? How do you reasonably achieve that success rate? One significant thing about the HMS Core is, unlike on other Android platforms, which are more generalized, we have finer and more specific control over our devices. Our app gallery and HMS surface can interact and control the device directly. In the case of PushKit, the devices and our PushKit server are more directly linked together. When an app's server sends a notification through our PushKit server, the Huawei Notification Center on the device would receive, process, and display the notification. Comparing with other solutions where push servers send the notifications to the apps on the devices, we have reduced the risk of loss during the transition and also does not need the app to be always running. PushKit also provides the message receipt functionality for you to monitor the message sending status. When a developer's own push server sends a notification message to a designated device through the PushKit server, it can optionally trigger the device to send a message receipt and then return the message receipt to the developer's server. The message received is comprehensive. Other than a success or failed status, it can also tell you a lot about your app and your users. For example, that the notification is received but not displayed because the notification of your app or on the entire device is disabled. Or maybe the app is inactive, which means the target device has not accessed Huawei PushKit for more than 30 days. It can also tell you that the targeted app does not exist on the target device anymore. Another highlight of the PushKit is the various modes of precise target pushing. Target pushing is highly sought after nowadays. Not only does it reduce the server loading by affording mass sending messages to those who would be likely irrelevant and hence unresponsive to the messages, it can also provide a more customized user experience 
and increase user satisfaction. The first type of target pushing is to a specific audience by user attributes, events, and tags. This feature is integrated with the HMS Analytic Kit, which I won't be going into much detail today, but basically you can select a group of users from the analytic data collected and send messages to them. The group's formation can be determined by a barrage of attributes, events and tags, and their combinations, for example, by app version, by location, by system version, by visiting frequency, etc, etc. For more realistic example, let's say you have released a new version of your app and there are important new features you want your loyal users in, say, Singapore, who owns any of your product in app to know. You can then construct an audience group consisting of those who have the app of any version older than the newest, located in Singapore, has triggered the in-app purchase event, and has revisited the app within the last seven days, and then send a push notification to them. This message would not make sense to your users outside of Singapore or those who have never bought anything in the app. And so now you have saved yourself some effort to send it and also saved them some time to discard the message. To go just a little deeper, after integration with Analytics Kit, we can directly send push notifications to user groups constructed by the audience management features. Analytics Kit's audience management can precisely map out users by, as mentioned, user attributes and behaviors, user's life cycle, retention analysis, loss prediction, funnel analysis, etc., and therefore makes target pushing to audiences simple and efficient. For example, I can go into my analytics console, look at my user life cycle analysis, proceed to see my growing users, and construct an audience out of my new growing users. Then, I can conveniently send a push notification to encourage them to continue with their engagement with my app. Other than that, we can also send messages by topics. In contrast to audience pushing, which is determined mostly by backend and analytics data, topic-based pushing is happening more on the device side and determined by users' own behaviors and decisions. For example, let's say your app is an online store. You can provide users an option to subscribe to the news of a particular category of products so you can remind them when there are new arrivals or restocks and through this improve your sales. This also applies to news apps, sports apps, games, etc. The publish subscriber model also enables higher scalability through parallel execution of message publishing, caching, routing, and sending, and makes message sending more cost effective. We will look further into topic based pushing later in the code demonstration section. In the newest HMS Core 5.0, we also provide further pushing capabilities of automated notification by scenarios. Examples of scenarios include weekends and holidays, when users insert headsets, when users disconnect Bluetooth car kit, a particular temperature, uh, user cancelling the DND status, or a certain UV intensity. More flexibility and possibilities are on their way. HMS Pushkit 
also takes care of style and appearance. On other platforms, this may require more manual implementation or third-party services or libraries. In HMS, through simple configurations on the App Gallery Connect Console or through APIs, we can easily change the appearances of the notifications. Other than the defaulted common styles, we can also make notifications with action buttons, inbox style notifications, or even custom styles like ringtone or voice playing. Also, other than normal notification messages, we also support data messages, which does not trigger display on the notification sender and would require the client app to process the data. Data messages have a wide range of usage and application and can further expand the possibilities of push notifications. Let me walk you through some examples. I believe everybody knows about AliExpress. At some point, enjoys their services and no introduction is needed, right? As established as AliExpress is, there are still challenges in the operation of push notification. Vast majority of the users of the app are outside of mainland China, and push notification is an important channel of communication for them. However, the delivery rate of other push platforms on Huawei devices is not as high as it should be. Together, we solved this issue with AliExpress by encouraging and facilitating the integration of PushKit. And afterwards, the message delivery rate has reportedly increased by 30% and daily active uses by 10%. Other than AliExpress, more and more famous, popular and essential apps have integrated HMS PushKit. PushKit is now used by more than 50 thousands of apps in over 200 countries and regions around the world, which include pioneers in different industries like lifestyle, social networking, shopping, utilities, media, entertainment, finance, games, so on and so forth. Even on this list, I'm sure all of you have at least heard of or have even used one or handful of them. The large customer base also helps us to analyze and collect feedback and consistently upgrade and improve our services. Now, let's talk a bit about integration and usage, shall we? We pride ourselves on simple integration of our HMS kits and PushKit is no different. We provide great flexibility in integration, where you can choose to integrate Huawei PushKit directly or integrate PushKit via third-party platforms. The advantage of directly integrating PushKit is of course a very simplified and straightforward integration. Our App Gallery Con Connect console is also convenient and easy to use and we will take a look at it later. If you are already using third-party push services, you may find that many widely used third-party platforms have already included Huawei PushKit in their services, and more are coming. Regardless of integrating directly or through third parties, the logics behind are similar. First, upon app launch, your app would call the push SDK to obtain a push token. Then, the push server will return an allocated token to your app, and your app would upload the token to your server. Afterwards, your app can optionally subscribe to a topic, and there, the push server would bind the token to the topic. Then, you can send messages through our app gallery console, from third parties console, or through APIs, which we'll cover in a minute. PushKit would determine the message type and display directly if it's a notification message or transfer data to your app if it's a data message. Finally, 
the device would send message receipts back to Pushkit server, and the Pushkit server can send result to your own server. There is a bit more preparation we'll need to do. First, we'll need to create an app and an Android Studio project. Then, we will need to generate a signature file, a signing certificate fingerprint, and configure the fingerprint and the app package name on App Gallery Connect. Then, we will need to configure the Maven repository address and the App Gallery Connect plugin. We will briefly go over this later in the coding demonstration. After the Android project is ready and configured, we will need to enable the Pushkit service on App Gallery Connect, select a data storage location, and optionally enable subsurfaces, such as message receipt, pushing on iOS and web, and uplink message receiving. And then we can download a JSON file from the console which verifies our app's identity and start adding Pushkit's dependencies and codes into your project. For now, I'll show you the configuration on App Gallery Connect. This one is the Pushkit Code Lab project I've created beforehand. And first, we'll go to the project setting, open the Manage APIs tab, and enable the Pushkit API. Next, we'll click on the Pushkit and enable it here. Then, App Gallery Connect will ask you to set the location. Since I'm in Hong Kong, I'll choose Singapore as my location. You can also click around and see which location includes your region. Back to Pushkit setting, and we can enable the subsurfaces here. For example, I would like to enable the receipt status. Now, let's look at some common APIs you may use. On the device side, under the HMS messaging class, we have the turn on push and turn off push methods. The function is pretty self-explanatory, where we can use them to enable and disable push notification as a whole. And for example, to give users the option to opt out from push notification entirely. We have the onNew token method from the HMS message service class that reacts to arrival of a new token. In this method, we can implement the flow to send the token back to your own server for further manipulation. Also, under the HMS messaging class, we have subscribe and unsubscribe, which are used for subscribing to topic-based messaging. We can use them on button clicks, on some particular user behaviors, like clicking into a certain section of our apps, or after staying in a page for a period of time. We also have the send method to send uplink messages. One of the most important methods is the onMessageReceived method under the HMS message service class, which is the method we need to receive data messages. There we can extract the data, pass and act upon it. We also have the getToken method, which is called to register for a new push token. Note that the getToken method in the HMS instant ID class is optional in the newer version of the push kit, which can be replaced by a parameter in the Android manifest. On the server side, we have the token API to obtain access token to the push server, which is mandatory. For security purposes, the apps server would first need to obtain the access token from our OAuth 2 server so that the access token can be used for the subsequent actions like sending messages. We also have the send message API, which the app server can use to send messages 
to the Pushkit server. This API can be used to send both notification messages and data messages, and it also supports token-based single sending, token-based group sending, topic-based sending, and topic combined sending. Similar to DeFi's side, we can also control topic subscription from the server side with the subscribe and unsubscribe APIs. With this API, we can subscribe users in batches and do not require users to manually act on it. For example, if we are creating a new topic, we can draw a batch of initial users from OData and subscribe them to the topic and would not need to wait for the subscribers to grow. Now, let's look at some real coding. In this code lab, we'll go through basic configurations, set up corresponding dependencies, and try to run demo remind me application to see the process of sending and receiving push notifications. The demo app will also show an example of the usage of topic-based messaging where the users can subscribe to an availability reminder of an item in an online store. As mentioned in the preparation phase, we we'll need to generate the signing certificate and fingerprint. We can create a key store using Studio, as you can see the push code lab.jks, and generate a fingerprint in command prompt or terminal using the key to command. We'll have to save this fingerprint in our project setting and download the agconnect surface.json and put it back to our project. Also, we'll need to make sure push kit is enabled storage location is confirmed and the corresponding subsurfaces are enabled because the app will not work if they are not. Next, we'll configure our build settings. First, we'll add the agconnect plugin in the root level build.gradle. Next, we'll go to the app level build.gradle, apply the agconnect plugin, make sure the mean SDK version is at least 17, and then add the push key dependency. After that, we'll go to Android Manifest, add the surface block and the metadata block to register them. We'll later create this surface to receive tokens and data messages. By setting push kit auto init enable to true, push kit's SDK would automatically request a push token from server on app launch. In the code, we'll add the class extending the HMS message surface class. And as mentioned, we'll add the onNew token method and then the onMessageReceived method. As we have added the metadata pushkit auto in enabled in Android Manifest, the token is requested automatically on app launch and onNew token will receive it. They will send the result to the display for us to verify. Next, We'll add some code in main activity. Later you will see we have a button in this app for the user to subscribe to the topic push code lab. And this button click listener is calling the subscribe method from the HMS messaging class for this. Now let's go to Android Studio. First, we we'll generate a signing certificate. Click on the menu, build, generate sign bundle slash APK. Select APK, next. We'll call it pushcodelab.jks and put it in the app folder of the project. And we'll call the key alias pushcodelab and set the key store password and key password as both one, two, three, four, five, six. Next. Select both V1 and V2 and click Finish. Now, let's switch to the command prompt. Already in the app folder of the project, we can run the command key to hyphen list hyphen V hyphen key store push code lab dot jks. 
enter the password and we will have to record the SHA-256 certificate fingerprint copy switching to app gallery connect we go to project setting scroll to the bottom in the app information section here we add the SHA-256 certificate fingerprint and click the tick to save switching back to android studio we'll first go to the root level build.gradle we'll add maven url https developer.huawei.com slash repo into build script repositories and all projects repositories also we'll add class path com dot huawei dot ag connect gcp 1.3.1.300 into build script dependencies next We'll head to the app level builder gradle. At the top, we'll add apply plugin com dot Huawei dot ag connect. Then we'll go to dependencies, add implementation dot Huawei dot HMS push 5.0.0.300 following that we'll go to Android manifest first we'll add the surface block To register the HMS message surface we're going to create. We'll set an intent filter of com.huawei.push.action.messaging event. Also, we'll set the metadata push kit auto init enable to true, which as mentioned would register for the push token automatically on app launch. While this is convenient, it is optional. If for some reason you want to obtain the token later, say following a button click or user login, you can still use the get token method to do the same thing. To save you from death by boredom watching me type tons of codes, type them wrong and have to type again. I have already created my push surface. You can see that it extends HMS message surface. First, we'll override the on new token method. It is not complicated. When the token arrives, this method will be called. Here we log it and added some more code to put it on display. Next, will override the onMessage received method. This is the place where we get the data from data messages and pass it to get what we want. In this demo, we're looking for title and content. Like the token, we'll also put them the token, we'll also put them on display. At this point our app already has the ability to receive push, push notifications and show them to the users. For topic subscription, we'll go to main activity. In this activity, we have a button called button subscribe, which I'll show you later. In this method, we'll add a listener to button subscribe. On click, 
it will call the HMS messaging class and call subscribe method and subscribe the user to our topic push code lab. Upon completion, we will lock the subscription result. Next, let's run the whole thing to see how it works like. This is what our demo app looks like. The push token is placed on top and the red one is the infamous remind me button. On click, it will show a result log. After that, we will go to the App Gallery Connect console and try to send notification to our app. First, we will try a data message and then we will try a notification message. Here, I'm using the high suite software to mirror my phone and you can see the demo app on the screen. Let me click the Remind Me button and you can see the success log appear here. For topic group, if the push kit server received a subscription call but the topic does not exist yet, it would automatically create that topic. It is a convenient feature, so we can implement more dynamic topic subscription. For example, we can insert batches of new topic names into our app through, say, APIs or remote configuration and do not need to worry about topic creations and app versions. So now, the topic push code lab has already been created. Let's send ourselves a data message to see. We go to the push kit console and click add notification. We'll call the message push code lab data message. Set its type as data message. Give it a title. Push code lab title. Give it a content. Push code lab content. Next, in push scope, We'll select subscriber from the drop down and select the topic push code lab. Now press submit and we can see the preview of the message. We can verify the information here and then we can click OK to send it. It should arrive at my phone anytime soon. Let's go back. Oh, it's here already. As the app received the data message, on message received method would be called, and as we've seen in the code, title and content would be extracted. The app would then send these values into display. Next, we can also send a notification message. Go back to Bushkit console and notification, type the similar values. Push code lab title, push code lab content. There are other configuration we can make here, say uh, large text. Um, we can add action buttons or we can configure the actions. We can open uh, the app with um, home page, custom action page, custom intent UI page and um, also add other key value pair into the message. Now, uh, let's also send it to subscriber of push code lab. We can click submit and verify the content and click OK. It should arrive at my phone soon too. And it's here. So you can see. In the notification message, um, I want to also mention 
a most common way to configure it would be for it to contain a deep link, custom content intent URI page, which when triggered the notification, the app would do some action to or go to some designated pages. That process and handling in HMS is the same as any other Android platform. We can extract deep link in uh, the or new intent method and act on it. This is the end of our presentation, and we will share this code lab project for your reference later. And meanwhile, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Clement Fong, for that inspiring lecture. I'm sure our viewers learned a lot from it. From understanding the principles and important capabilities of Huawei Push to using the push capability and implementing the reservation reminder capability, I'm sure you're now getting a feel for the simplicity and fun that to offer. There are also precise, diversified push modes, rich notification presentation styles, and a convenient operation console, which can help you perform user operations. We're now going to invite our lecturer, Clement Fong, to answer some of your questions live. Welcome, Clement. Hi, Sam. Hi, everybody. OK, let's just get stuck in straight away. So I'm going to choose some, um, some questions from the forum. Um, OK, here's one. What are the restrictions on using Huawei Pushkit? Well, uh, there's generally not much restriction on using a Pushkit. Uh, it's a simple, it's free. Uh, I think the main restriction here is that a maximum of 3,000 messages can be sent to an app on a device every day only. Uh, if the number exceeds 3,000, messaging traffic to the app will be limited for 24 hours. If the number further exceeds 100,000, uh, Huawei PushKit will be directly disabled. In that case, a ratification must be performed and a ratification plan must be submitted to apply for the PushKit again. Okay, very clear answer, thank you. Okay, let's look for another. Uh, here's one. Can we get data from notification messages? Uh, as I just mentioned, there are more configuration for notification messages. One common way to send notification messages with data is to embed a deep link in it. For example, when we are sending a message in a App Gallery Connect console, we can set the action to open up and then set the app page to a custom intent URI page. And then we can input the deep link there. Uh, when the notification triggers the app, the deep link is also sent to the app. So afterwards, the whole flow is basically the same as any other Android app development. And uh, you can extract the intent data in the on, in, on new intent method and process it there. Well, um, another way is to send a data message and extract the data in it and we construct local notification. Uh, this way, you can have a much bigger flexibility in the whole handling of the message. Great. Again, very well explained. Thank you. Um, let's have another. Okay. How do we send localized notifications? Well, um, to send localized notification, you can call a RESTful API of the PushKit server to perform a configuration. Uh, to send a JSON configuration with a multi underscore lang underscore key field. And the HMS call would read the title underscore key and body under the score key respectively and display it if there is a language suitable for the device. Okay, perfect. Um, does PushKit support other mobile frameworks such as React Native or Flutter? Absolutely. Uh, PushKit has already been officially supporting React Native, uh, Flutter, Codolfer, Xamarin, and Ionic. Uh, game engines like Unity and Cocos support uh, also under development right now. Okay, very impressive, and I'm sure our viewers will agree with that. Okay, here's another good one. What does result code 6003 mean? Well, uh, the official description for the code 6003 is uh, the inconsistent certificate fingerprint configurations, which means uh, the certificate fingerprint on the app on the device and the one in the App Gallery Connect console does not align. 
So uh, to fix this, uh, we'll have to ensure that the fingerprint in the app on the device is consistent with the one uh, configured through the SHA-256 fingerprint in the App Gallery Connect console. Uh, also, one thing to note is uh, the HMS core APK will cache the signature file. So uh, we'll need to, after performing uh, the checking, you also have to uh, clear the cache of the app and to make sure that works perfectly. Great, a very detailed answer. And I'm sure many of our viewers will find that very useful, that answer. Okay, I think we have time for a few more questions. Um, sure. Okay, here's a good one. What are differences between data messages and notification messages? Well, um, basically, uh, data messages are not displayed after being sent by Hoya Push Kit to phones. Uh, instead, the messages are transferred to the developer's app, and the app is responsible for parsing or maybe displaying the messages. On the other hand, um, when a device receives a notification message, the system directly displays it in the notification center. Uh, the user can type the notification message to trigger a corresponding action, such as opening the app, uh, opening a web page, or as we just talked about, uh, open a deep link in the app. Very good. I think that very much answers that question. Um, next one is, can we hide notification content in lock screen? Yes. Uh, when using the send API, uh, you can input a visibility value. The value can be public, uh, secret, and private. Secret means the message would not displayed at all on lock screen, and uh, private means the content of the message would be hidden when it is displayed on the lock screen. So uh, if visibility is not specified, by default, it would be private. OK, that's very useful. Great. Um, and what user information does Huawei Push use? Uh, in Huawei Push Kit, we collect uh, uh, some information about the users, like the application associated ID, which we abbreviated it as the AAID in our documents, uh, the IP address, which we will not save, uh, the topic name of the push notification, uh, the user group name, uh, token application record, and uh, message sending record, arrival, display, tap, and clear records. Okay, that's clear. Um, I think we have time for a couple more. Sure. Okay, here's one. Does Huawei push kit depend on signing in with a Huawei ID? Uh, no, uh, the Huawei push kit does not depend on signing in with a Huawei ID. You can receive messages from Huawei push kit without signing in anything. Wow, okay, very good. Okay, so here's, here's our last question, I think. What are the restrictions on enabling Huawei PushKit? Uh, there are no specific restrictions. Uh, you create an account, uh, the developer account, uh, you log in, create an, a project, create an app, and you can enable PushKit there from the App Gallery Connect console. Okay, that's really great. So I think that's gonna be our final question for today. So thank you everyone for your great questions. We had some really good ones. And a really big thank you to Clement Fong for your insightful answers. Uh, thank you, Sam. And thank you everybody for joining and listening to me. If you have any other questions about our push kit, you can visit our developer site for more information. And you can also go to our developer forum to ask. Uh, I will be there to answer questions as well. Great. Well, that brings us to the end of today's Q&A. If you still have some questions, don't worry. You can leave them in the forum and community groups at a later time, and our experts will respond. Also, please take a moment to complete our questionnaire. The link is just below the video on the YouTube page. And you can also scan the QR code that is coming up at the end. And that's all for today. Thank you all for joining us and taking part in today's Huawei Tech Talk live broadcast on Pushkit. We will see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.